Hey guys, welcome to Life of Steph. I am Steph. Today we are going to be talking about another true crime that happened years ago and it actually happened on Easter. So March 29th, 1934, we have James Urban Ruppert that was born and he pretty much from the get-go like he seriously had issues with like just issues so his mom would be like rude and she wouldn't treat him like how normally mothers treat their sons she would actually say that he was a mistake she had wanted a daughter and she got a son so um, naturally James was a mistake because of that so, and then his father had issues he was violent and he had a short fuse wasn't really affectionate or didn't really even have time for his sons so he wasn't much of I guess like a father figure and then when he passed away his James's older brother took over as the father figure or the head of the household. Now his older brother's name was Leonard and Leonard also was not that caring towards James. He would pick on him, he would call him names and James ended up doing pretty bad at school. He wasn't necessarily the best student. He had very few friends and he was a pretty small kid also and then even as he grew into adulthood he didn't he wasn't like tall I guess you could say. When he was 16 he did end up attempting suicide however his attempt did fail it wasn't successful so he ended up just going back to this life that he was not happy in, that he didn't want to be in. And that was only at 16 years old. Like, that's got to be hard. So, as an adult, he was only 5 foot 6. And he weighed about 135 pounds. He got older, and as he got older... He just kept getting more and more resentful towards his brother. His brother ended up doing something that was ridiculously messed up. So James only had a few girlfriends and his brother, Leonard, ended up marrying one of his girlfriends that James had. Yeah. Before that, James did drop out of college. Leonard became super successful in electrical engineering. He got a degree. He was amazing at sports. So pretty much Leonard was succeeding at everything and James was struggling with everything. Then Leonard married one of um, James's girlfriends. After they got married, they ended up having eight children. Yeah. So by the time that James was 41 years old, he was actually still living with his mom. He had debt issues. He was being threatened by his mom that if he didn't start paying, she was going to evict him. And on the other hand, we have Leonard with a super successful career. And he was actually working for General Electric. So during that time, you know, after his mother threatened with evicting him, it seems that that was his breaking point, what pushed him really over the edge. So about early March or so, we do have witnesses that came forward that James was inquiring about silencers. He did have a gun, so he was interested in getting a silencer for it. And he had also gone out to purchase 
ammo. In general, he did start changing more. His attitude um, became weird. He got weird. He was just totally different. Start changing completely different. And he was battling deep depression, which obviously I think that would be a given with, you know, how, like, the type of life that he's lived with, like, very little family support. I can't imagine what that would be like. We'll fast forward a bit to March 29th, 1975. People did see him in a field. He was target practicing and shooting tin cans. And he actually owned a 357 Magnum. Later that night, after doing some target practicing, he did end up going to a bar, the 19th hole cocktail lounge. Now there he sat down, was talking with a bartender, and she did recall that he seemed like really depressed and really down. And he also was talking to her about his mom's comments about the eviction and like that he needed to start paying. She said that he told her that he needed to solve the problem. So around 11 p.m. that night on March 29th, he did end up leaving the bar and then returned. The same night, he returned again. He was asked, you know, like, did you solve your problem? And he replied, no, not yet. And he stayed at the bar until about 2.30 in the morning. The next day was Easter Sunday. His brother Leonard and his wife, they did go over to James's and Leonard's mother's house, which is where James lived. So the couple took their eight children over to visit their grandmother. Now their children range from the age of four to 17 years old. But once they got there, James, stayed upstairs since he'd had like a long night, he'd been drinking, whatever. He was sleeping it off. So he stayed upstairs, sleeping, avoiding people. During that time, the rest of his family were downstairs celebrating their Easter, having family quality time, all that fun stuff. Around 4 p.m. is when James woke up and he decided to head on downstairs. Before going downstairs, he loaded his 357 Magnum and two 22 handguns and a rifle. Then he went downstairs. Upon entering the kitchen, he shot and killed his brother, sister-in-law, and mother. Also in the kitchen were two of his nieces and one of his nephews, and he ended up killing them as well in the kitchen. Then he moved on to the living room and in the living room where the rest of his nephews and one other niece. And in the living room, he ended up killing them as well. So each of his victims was shot with one disabling shot so that they couldn't run away. And then he went in with another shot, the fatal shot, either to the head or the chest. Um, the only sign of any type of struggle in the crime scene, in the kitchen, in the living room, was just an overturned trash can. It's said that this whole massacre lasted no more than five minutes. After he was done, he ended up spending about three hours in the house, just himself, and then he decided to call the police and report what had happened. When, uh, when he reported it, he waited at the house. He was waiting just outside of the front door until the police officers arrived. <clears throat> police on the scene described it as a slaughterhouse. It's said that there was so much 
blood on the floor that it ended up dripping through the floorboards and supposedly even to till recently there was still staining on the floorboard so they did live in a pretty small community so it really shocked everybody and a lot of people did say that they would have never expected something like this from James they said that he was quiet unassuming a really good neighbor so they were shocked by this massacre that happened and they were shocked that James was the one responsible for it so like I mentioned the whole massacre lasted not even five minutes so during those five minutes there were a total of 35 rounds that were fired all four of the weapons were recovered at the scene so when the trial began it was originally held in Hamilton Ohio James was found guilty for 11 counts of murder and he was sentenced to life in prison a mistrial was declared because it was believed that he didn't receive a fair trial he would be having a second trial in Findlay Ohio the second trial began on June 1975 and during this trial they did have the witnesses present the information about him inquiring for the silencer the witnesses that saw him during his target practice before the shootings and then they had the bar staff that could testify to him talking about his mother and the eviction notice and the stress that that was all causing and how he needed to take care of it so after all of that evidence was presented um in july 1975 he ended up receiving 11 consecutive life sentences. 1982, he did receive another trial because of an appeal. This time, he was working with a defense attorney, Hugh Hallbrock. He was actually convinced that his client was insane. And he ended up organizing psychiatrists and psychologists, um... From around the country because he thought that James was insane he ended up actually funding all of these people coming now with this new attorney and everything that he organized on his new trial he was found guilty on two counts of first-degree murder so he was found guilty of first-degree murder for his mother and his brother but the other nine murders he committed he wasn't found guilty on those due to insanity with the two first degree murders he ended up receiving one life sentence for each so he got two consecutive life sentences now he didn't receive a death penalty because during this time is when capital punishment had been suspended so that was from 1972 to 1976. So that's the reason why he was sentenced to life sentences instead of being sentenced to death. Fast forward to 1995. At that point, he was 61 years old and he was granted another hearing. He was in front of the parole board, but his release was denied. And then in 2015, again, he had another hearing in front of the parole board and again, he was denied. So as of a few months ago, as of December 2019, he is still incarcerated. He is at the Franklin Medical Center in Ohio, which is a part of Ohio's department of rehabilitation and correction his next hearing is scheduled in 2025 and at that point he will be 91 years old all of his 11 victims they were all buried at arlington memorial gardens 
in Ohio. And the house where James lived was open to the public a year later and their property was pretty much auctioned off. Crews came in, cleaned the house, recarpeted it, and they started it started being rented out to families, families that were new to the area that were renting this house because they had no idea what had previously happened in this household. It is said though that families have reported to moving in and leaving the house due to eerie things happening. So they have reported hearing voices or strange noises, lights would turn on and off, doors being slammed, and also footsteps are sometimes heard coming down the stairs. So that happened for a few families after this massacre. Then for quite a while, it was left alone. Nobody moved into this house. It was just an abandoned house. And then after that period of the house being empty, it was once again rented out to somebody, to a family. And that family didn't report anything weird happening, nothing out of the ordinary happened to this family. So take that as you want. But that pretty much wraps up our Easter massacre. Let me know what you guys think. Had you heard about this before? Be sure to give this video a like. You can share the video, subscribe, be sure to turn on the notification bell. You can check out all of my social media. It'll be linked down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.